<laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX, and we're going to do something slightly bizarre. We're going to have me, someone from London, interviewing someone else from London here in California. And that's because we chase the technology, not the origin of the person. I have the honor of talking today to Marcus Taylor, and he is uh, from a company, Silent Sensors, and uh, there are a number of technologies we wish to explore in this. Uh, the move to um, structural electronics is, is a strong trend at our show here at the ID TechX show, and this is a part of that. Uh, there is an element of Internet of Things, of course, and there is also an element of energy harvesting, which is coming back in very different forms. It's being reinvented. So I'm going to touch on all those because this particular company is involved in all of those. So first of all, why the name Silent Sensors? It was uh, an idea that came up about three years ago and it stuck. Um, uh, the idea was basically that there's a lot of chatter going on, but we don't hear it. But you, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth, you've got GSM. It's going on all around us right now, but it's silent. Yeah, that's very true. So you're involved in structural electronics in the sense of um, making, a, a, amazingly, a, a, a UHF tag uh, that's suitable for going in a tire. Can you show us this? Tell us about this? Yes. Yeah, so um, the tire and, and the elastomer market in general uh, is, is um, we started looking at it from the point of flexibility. So this is a material that's flexible but it's not stretchable. You can't do that to it. Whereas this material, we can stretch it and that deformation is something that we can accommodate with the inks that we have uh, developed that uh, we can print onto here and then <coughs> surface mount the um, RFID tag on, on there. So it's very much a, a material science problem and a mechanical engineering problem where we've had to work with the tire engineers who have now learn together with us what the requirements of right. electronics are and then there's also the antenna design because uh, rubber has a dielectric constant that we have to then so we have to design the antenna to be detuned so that it tunes itself when we uh, apply it to the antenna and then this then um, these are actually although they look the same they're actually two different types of rubber um, and uh, so each of these require slightly different treatments and, and so on. So the form factor is we can either do an inlay, and that's where the, 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 the focus is making it compatible with a, a vulcanization process. So the components also need to survive 165 Celsius for 20, 30 minutes max, sometimes less, depending on if it's a truck tire or an aircraft tire but not a wheelbarrow tire, because uh, the mass is a lot lower. So the, the, and, and the whole, why have we got traceability in tires? Well, uh, f at, the, at the end of the day, it's the trend we see in all industries, which is moving towards tire or, or as a service business models. So if you've got uh, unit level identification and traceability, then you have the enabler for that kind of business model which you wouldn't have otherwise, because today uh, the tire is typically marked with a batch code and a serial number, but it's very labor-intensive and difficult. So if we look at it from a total cost of ownership model, the tire, the, the RFID tag, um, if, we don't, if we don't just look at the bill of materials, but also look at the whole lifespan of, of the tire, then this facilitates that track and trace that is important. Safety, remolds, all the rest, yes. I heard years ago that there was a stage where a tyre through its life can have seven or more barcodes put on it and they get damaged, they get disoriented and uh, it's not really a clever way to go. So that would be great progress. Are you uh, involved in uh, adding power to that? Yeah, so the, the, the sort of the evolution of, of this, and, and this is a, an early prototype, I, I haven't got the, the latest versions because they're a little bit proprietary, but this shows how you can use off-the-shelf components to develop a, 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 um, a system to, to, uh, to um, prototype and this is a, a self-powered tire pressure monitoring system. So you've got a, a TPMS, standard off-the-shelf TPMS chip there. You've got a super, uh, oh, sorry, a capacitor there. 
for uh, storing the energy capacitor and then you, or super that, that's just a capacitor yeah. yeah and then then you've got a rectification circuit and this is the the bus bars to connect the piezoelectric material right. so so and that then is capable of producing enough power to run the sensor long enough for it to then effectively replace the TPMS sensor that today sits in the rim or, or on the valve stem of a, of a, of a wheel assembly I mean, the problem of TPMS has got easier in the sense that as electronics develops, it always needs less electricity. That's yeah. good. But traditionally, with piezoelectric energy harvesting, various people uh, went into it and then came out of it like um, uh, micro strain and others. And um, there were problems not just with reliability, but with... Um, more seriously with uh, trying to get wide band gap because vibrations have an irritating habit of not being the frequency you want or they jump about and you're one minute it's working next minute it isn't working and traditionally with piezoelectrics with say ceramics you you have the issue of when you try to get wide acoustic bandwidth it then becomes unreliable because you go into tension or something are, are you doing anything there to get wide bandwidth yeah so um we're, we're using our know-how in, in printed electronics, uh, with this is silver, uh, but we can also put PZT materials into here and f find a, an optimum between, to get the right densification uh, and also the, the amount of, of material that we need to deposit. Uh, so it, it's really a trilemma that we're solving between the energy harvesting, the storage and the power management. In fact, our neighbor here has helped us enormously with low power, uh, power management IC uh, that combined with the, uh, uh, the pseudo capacitor that we're developing here, which is solid state. Um, so that it's, it's all about getting those three components working well together. And um, the, the other thing is to, to also add storage here so that we, we need a rechargeable battery and a supercapacitor to cover the, the, the whole range of, of use cases. So, so normally to, that comes along the ride with any supercapacitor, but to maximize it, you usually need an aqueous electrolyte and something like graphene carbon nanotubes or something. Is that what you're doing? Or? No. So this is, uh, this is solid state, and um, if you like, the formula is, is a little bit proprietary, but it is a lithium-based cathode, oh. um, and then we have a solid state electrolyte. Um, and, uh, and it's proved to be very efficient um, and we've got some data that we can, I can share with you but it, it is sufficient to address the requirement that we need and we have a whole roadmap to increase the, reduce the size yeah, and increase the density. Yeah. A combination of battery and supercapacitor. Correct. Yeah. Uh, do you know the energy density or anything of that? Um, I haven't got the figure in my head right now, but it, 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 is, it is sufficient to be a replacement for this capacitor. No, that's, that's great. Uh, but you're not going broadband acoustically. You're intending that you choose a particular frequency, and classically you get almost nothing off of that, away from that frequency. It's a very sharp peak with piezos, is that right? Uh, but you believe that particular frequency will be available yeah, all the time? Yeah, we empirically, and, 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 and we can run it at different yeah. speeds and so on as so well. Initially you're on PZT? Yeah. And you might move to PVDF or something or not? So PVDF unfortunately has the characteristic that it doesn't like high temperatures. So no. it, it, it is something that we're exploring with other materials and we've also had some discussions about the opportunity to use lithium niobate as well as, as an alternative. Um, but that, correct, yeah. Yeah. And, and there are other solutions that we're looking at, but we've got enough uh, of, a, of a starting point now to go to the, if you like, the next stage of, of development. Good, excellent. And how many of you are there? How big is the business? In total, uh, including our JV, there's 14 of us. Uh, and we're distributed between um, Sedgefield in the north at CPI and down south at, in, in Swindon. Yeah. 
uh, and we're, we're now looking to consolidate that. So we're we're in a fundraising mode. So if there's anyone out there that would <laughs> like to, fourteen. Fourteen. One yeah, four. good, four. excellent. And when you talk about silent energy on one visiting card, what does that mean? So that's our joint venture focusing on the development of the supercapacitor. Uh -huh. So we, we, we wanted to split the two so that we, we had a team that focused on, on the development of this. Well, that's most interesting. What uh, questions should I have asked? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think the, 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 the fact that we're focused on tyres is a, actually a very narrow segment of a, of a very big industry, which I guess you'd call rubber elastomers, and, and, and that uh, is, is, a, is a market that I think, in general, you could say is under-serviced by the IO, industrial IoT market because <clears throat> of the challenging manufacturing processes that you have to address. Um, but if you look at if you look at any system, whether it be a tire or a gasket or a seal, none of the systems that we need in modern civilization would exist without these these uh, very valuable materials. So, uh, and it also is an area which one question. Uh, so, we've found, for example, that a bit, a little bit like. Um, uh, the clock radio by combining a clock and a radio you create a new product set and by looking at seals and gaskets as an opportunity for combining a temperature sensor with a seal so you have those uh, yes, dual yes, functions yes, again, you yes, you have a, a whole so new a whole new um, opportunity to optimize uh, uh, in many respects because you then can have more temperature sensors around the system, whereas at the moment you're sort of looking at the average in the sump. Or, and the other thing that's interesting, of course, if we look at uh, the vehicle industry, um, electric vehicles, as opposed to internal combustion engine vehicles, have the same problem, or, or have the same problem. They need coolant. In fact, bulk batteries, they don't like huge changes in temperature. So the cooling system becomes even more critical even compared to an internal combustion engine. I, I'm sure we've all at some point cooked an engine, but it yes. still keeps running, yes. whereas you're not going to do that with an electric vehicle. Uh, once you've cooked the battery, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, so interestingly, um, electric vehicles need more rubber hoses, in a sense, than an, electric, yeah. uh, than an internal combustion engine, as an, as an aside. How fascinating. That's very interesting. And when you're doing piezoelectrics, uh, you, you happen to have made a sensor. You have as well. It, it can function in both ways, but we're only looking at it as an energy harvesting okay. device at this and stage. And how much power comes out of it? Um, w well, we, depending on how much area we, we're using, we can go from hundreds of microwatts to milliwatts. Oh, indeed. Yeah. So milliwatts would be credit card size or something, or quite big. Um, you you can also stack them. Um, and we, we, we haven't really explored that in much detail yet because, of course, as you laminate them, they become more rigid and, and finding the, the optimum mechanical area there is, is difficult. So the next stage for us is really to start modeling everything that we've learned empirically and, and creating more of a kind of data model that, that we can use to do the design work together with the mechanical engineers and so on before we go to a lot of expense of making things. Well, thank you very much. Fascinating story. Wonderful company. Obviously going to go well. Definitely should be invested in. Thank you. And we wish you well. And uh, we're going to come back and follow your story in the years to come. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, there was one aside I was going to say, Peter, that... Yes. It was thanks to ID TechX that, that we met um, oh, Combery. Yes. We met them in Berlin 18 months ago. Right. Yes. And thanks to them, we yes. managed to create yes. a, a Java. Yes. And I was actually in, in Moscow uh, only two weeks ago at the, at the British Embassy where we signed the agreement with the Prince Michael of Kent. Yes, that's right. We, in this business, it's global, isn't it? And you have to get going and visit and learn learn things. I, uh, I last week visited uh, 
someone in Ohio who'd heard me talk in North Finland the week before. <laughs> so it goes on. <laughs> but anyway, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> but no, that's lovely. So wonderful to meet you and really fascinating technology. We love the technology. It's good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.